So welcome, welcome everybody to Craft Corner. This is where Hope and I will teach you how to create the simple DIY craft that you can do at home using very common household items. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed checking out all the music that we did yesterday. Those songs are something I can't get out of my head. Um, so this week's craft has us very bubbly today. And why you may ask, today's project is called the Bubbles Challenge. Here's everything you'll need. You want to give them a run through of everything we'll need for today? Sure, Mark. You will need a large container of bubbles. Or we got a recipe for your own bubbles here. Mm -hmm. uh, four cups of warm water, a half cup of granulated sugar, and a half cup of liquid dish soap. And don't worry too, everything, all the instructions for everything will be on the screen as we're going through it. Yes, it will. Uh, we got some pipe cleaners. Just some things here. We got regular drinking straws, plastic, yep. plastic drinking straws, yep. and we got handy dandy scissors. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to pause the video, go gather supplies, come back, and we'll do stuff. Sound good? Sound Sounds good? great, Mark. Perfect. Alright, go get your stuff. So did you get your supplies? Perfect. <laughs> yes, we got our supplies all. Um, let's get into it. Uh, here are your instructions. And what you're just going to be doing today, pretty much, is creating your own bubble wine. Exciting. That's it. Yep. Uh, through these resources, if you're going to use the scissors, you don't have to really, because pipe cleaners and straws are pretty flexible. If you're going to use scissors, make sure they're appropriate for your age and you're, you have a parent or a trusted adult nearby. If you're under the age of, say, 13, 14. If you can't be trusted with scissors, like I'm Don't afraid Hope, Hope might be, um, you can't. Be, you have to be at least under the age of 18 for that. But if you're over the age of 18 and watching, you can use scissors. Just be safe. So, but what I want you to do mainly is use your imagination. If you're a little older, I want you to try and make like a 3D bubble wand. So I've seen cubes, cute, like a cute bubble wand was an example that I saw. Um, but overall, just get creative with it. You know, and neither am I. So I'm going to take about half of these. I'm going to take some of these. You can use, you can use whatever you want. Um, we might have to steal the bowl for another craft so that we can put some of the bubbles in there. <laughs> Perfect, but I was, okay. So, and yeah, that's, we're just gonna kind of walk you through how we're gonna make ours. I'm not curious. Neither so, am I. How can I make a simple home? <laughs> you just do this. Done. I think I'm done. I'll get a little creative with it. I remember why I don't do crafts, I do science. <laughs> Because I realize how not good at this I am. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter how good it is. What matters is that you're having fun. That's true. Funny enough, I said that at one of the videos I did today. Because, you know, I don't know what's going to be good at Sometimes you just got to have a good time. Words of inspiration from Hope Robinson. <laughs> Example. I'm not really good at this, but I am having a fun time. That's what matters. Okay. So here's this. I made like a spoon. Interesting. <laughs> Will it work with bubbles? I guess there's only one way to find out, but I'll, I'll let you get yours down first before we try it if you want. I didn't even use any of the straws. I guess I should incorporate a straw. <coughs> I made a uh, heart. It isn't very good, but... Well, it's hard to make a heart with a... Oh, here's what I want to do. It's hard to make a heart with a pipe cleaner. But I think it's pretty cute, so... It is. But if you want, if you're done, then, if you want to just go ahead and pour the bubble solution into the bowl. Bubbles. Hopefully that's big enough. Again, don't forget to, if you can't get bubble solution, because I know it's the end of summer, 
by the time you guys are seeing this. I gave you the recipe to make your own, and that's stuff you should have it on your house. So. Oh gosh. Just opening the bubble. Oh no. Oh, I don't want to do that. So I made a contraption out of this one. Interesting. <laughs> so let's see if this works. Gotcha. So I, because I, I, I don't know. Pouring one out for the purpose. Pouring one out for the purpose. Pouring it out for the end of summer. Cheers. Which is funny too, because the week that this video is going up is the first week of fall. So we are technically, we did technically pour one out for the end of summer. So, you want me to go first? Yeah. Don't drink the bubble solution. Don't drink the bubble solution. Don't drink the bubble solution. Drink the bubble solution. I don't know. I, don't know. <coughs> I realize this now. I don't know how to blow this. What would make more sense? I don't know. I don't know what you made, Lord. No, mine didn't work out well. Any luck with yours? No. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey. Craft successful. Oh, look. Oh, that's. This is the most fun part. It is. It's one thing I like about doing crafts. Like this is the perfect, and especially now that you guys are back to school, I, I feel like this is just the perfect, like, de-stressor. That was huge! I made some big bubbles. I made a huge one! <laughs> okay. So as Hope's building bubbles, I, I, Hope's going to continue to blow bubbles. I want to, I'll, I'll kind of tie everything together, that way you guys can get to your homework and everything. Homework? Lame. I know. So as you can tell from Hope, and this is actually kind of a perfect side point, you know, each bubble that she's blowing right now is very unique. I wish they were heart shaped. That is true. I wonder if, they, I wonder if using the straw maybe would make it heart shaped. How do you make shaped bubbles? Somebody let us know, because we're not good at this apparently. So, like I said, each bubble is unique. You know, just like how God created each of us. Because we're all unique, we can hear from God in different ways. So what are some ways that you can hear from God? Am I supposed to answer the question? You can. No. Okay. <laughs> so since Hope is being stubborn and doesn't want to answer, you guys will have to answer down in the comments below. We'll do that. That makes it easier. So you can hear God through worship music, which I think is a good idea. Yeah. You can hear God through reading the Bible. That's a good one. Easy to do, too. Yeah. Since it's on, like, every device ever, you know? Yeah. Like, this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have this in my pocket. Neither. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, can also hearing, you can also hear from God from talking to others that you know, that know God. Talk to me. Like, talk to Hope. She knows Talk God. to Mark. Talk to me. I, I know him. I study him. I teach school. Uh, I did, actually. Oh, I, took two, I took two religion classes in school. Interesting. And actually, I should only say one because the other one was an Islam course. But I did. I studied the Old Testament. I only learned math. <laughs> so she knows the math side, which is actually some of the other crafts today might have to do with me. Exactly. So there we go. So before we close today, I want to say this week's bottom line together. Whoa. Sorry, what a big bubbles. what a big bubble that got. Oh. So you got to say that bottom line. Oh. That's the bottom line. So, before we close today, let's say that this week's bottom line together, you can hear from God. And that brings us to the end of our time together this week. I hope you're just as bubbly about this week's project as I and Hope are, as she's still blowing bubbles. Um, we will see you tomorrow for a tasty episode of Food Focus. I was telling you before we recorded this, because I just got done, um, I, there was a lot of peanut butter in it. Um, so stay tuned, though, for a word from our pastor, Pastor Kathy, as she kind of leads us through a midweek devotional and a prayer to send us off for the rest of the week. Do you want to share one last bubble more? Do it! Share one with me. Oh, you're right. That's what you meant by that. Together bubble. No, together bubble. I did. Oh, you're yeah. so bad. Yes! All right, so we're going to stay focused on God. See you tomorrow. Good evening and welcome to Fall Bible Focus. 
I'm so glad that you've joined us this week. I'm Pastor Kathy, and I'd like to talk with you for just a few minutes about this week's Bible story, the story of the wise and foolish builders. A story Jesus told that helps us to remember what it means to have a strong foundation underneath us, a, a sturdy place um, in the way that we think and see the world. Jesus talked about a, one builder, one person who built his house on the sand. Beautiful house set on the sand. But when a big storm came, there was nothing to hold that house into, in the ground and it just washed away. Sort of like building a sandcastle on the beach and when the waves come up, it just washes the sand away. The wise builder built his house on rock. On, on flat, strong rock that he could attach the house to, and it was sturdy and strong. And when the storm came through, it didn't wash this house away. This house was strong enough to stand firm. Jesus then said that those who hear and do the word of God are like the wise builder. Sort of saying to us that if we, if we have taken the time to build a relationship with God, to uh, know how to pray with God, how to be uh, depending on God, that even when bad things happen, even when storms come or hard things happen in our lives, we know that we can still stand strong in our faith in God. And the storms of life don't destroy us like it destroyed that house built on sand. So this week's theme is about hearing God. But how do we do that? How do we hear God? We have opportunities to hear God speak to us through Bible reading, through Sunday school classes and Bible studies, through your meetings together for CORE or Wednesday Night Live. We can hear from God through teachers and parents from pastors and friends, others who are believers in Jesus. And the teaching they give us helps us to ask questions and to think about who we understand God to be and to know how much God loves and cares for us. We can learn then, we can hear about God and, and from God through other people. But we can also hear God's voice within ourselves. God often speaks to us. Maybe, maybe it feels more like a whisper, but God whispers in us. Sometimes we hear that as our conscience. When we know within ourselves that something we're about to do is either right or wrong. And that can often be the voice of God, helping us to choose to do the things that are good, the things that are right and to avoid the things that are wrong for us or for others. Their conscience can be the voice of God in us. We can also hear the word of God as almost a feeling, just a sense of knowing that God is telling us to do or not do something, that God is reminding us that God is with us all the time and loves us all the time, all of us, no matter what. How do we know then if the feelings we have in our hearts and minds inside of ourselves are really from God or not. Because we can hear a lot of different voices, be told to do a lot of different things by a lot of different people. I always feel confident knowing that it's God's voice. If it's the voice and the feeling is telling me to do something good, something that will be good and healthy for me, or something that will be good for others, something that is going to make the world better and not be harmed. So the voice of God can tell us to help someone, to comfort someone who's sad, to encourage someone who's feeling down and not knowing really how to keep going on. The voice of God can help us to tell others about God. It might encourage us to tell someone who's feeling really sad that God loves them very much. 
sometimes the voice of God gives us peace, even when there are some scary or anxious things going on around us. So we do hear God's voice as a whisper, as a feeling sometimes. We can hear the word of God from other people who believe in God and who can answer questions that we may have or encourage us, comfort us, and tell us about God's peace. So I hope that as you hear more about this story this week, that you will listen to hear the word of God, the voice of God inside of you, and trust that if it is for something good and something helpful, that God is speaking to you and loves you very, very much. Good night.